Lost City of Etz Anoa. Although we may never know the true extent of the Aztec fight back against the conquistadors, if they had been immune to smallpox, it can at least be agreed that the decimation by the Spanish in the Americas had far-reaching consequences that are still being reverberated to this very day. It has now been 500 years since the Aztec Empire collapsed under the strain and greed of the Spanish arrival, and the motives were sinister from the off. Convert to Catholicism and surrender your possessions or be murdered and robbed. The communications of such choices, of course, is the ignorance of the player in a crown who limits the need for others to be conscious in a closed, civilized existence. The discovery of the Americas by the Spanish signified the end of old ways. Ways that were captured and preserved by the inhabitants of these lands since the survival of the cataclysm. The knowledge lost to ignorance by these invaders is unprecedented. The cultural demise to a so-called superior religion is one of the most shocking examples of so-called ethnic cleansing in the history of the world. Make no mistake. The illnesses of the European explorers spread through the Native Americans. Populations were devastated and the survivors were forced to make a last stand against the invading infestation that weakened their spirit and bodies, much to their confusion at such an effect. It must have felt hopeless during these times, but their stories have at least prevailed. In the age of technology, we take to the sky to see the things that we can't see on the ground. And thanks to these technologies of new, a past is being recovered that these invaders would have had us completely forget about altogether. Gazing down on a Kansas pasture, one drone operator struck the discovery of a lifetime. Upon further investigation, it has now been confirmed to be buried remnants of a horseshoe-shaped ditch made almost 500 years ago by ancestors of today's Wichita and affiliated tribes, and it is thought to be part of the lost city of Etzanoa. Wait till you hear this. Archaeologists believe that the cultural heritage of the Wichita may be traced back well over a thousand years to the Washita River culture of central and western Oklahoma, where they enjoyed life living along fertile valleys. These people resided in small villages of rectangular mud plastered houses, hunting buffalo, elk, deer, and small game, gradually collecting wild plants for foods, medicines, and rituals, while making tools from readily available stone, wood bone, and antler. Life was good and the land was plentiful. Some Washita River people began to build larger villages with circular grass houses thought to have been built around 1351, but possibly earlier, some of which were heavily fortified. When first encountered by the Spanish around 1541, the ancestors of the Wichita were following a way of life that spanned many generations and even continued into the 18th century a way of old telling stories of the before time, thought to be a pre-cataclysmic age from which these people had survived and re-emerged. The discovery of the horseshoe-shaped ditch adds to suspicions that the Kansas site was part of a sprawling population center that Spanish explorers dubbed the Great Settlement in 1601. Called Etzanoa by a captive the Spanish took from the Great Settlement, it could turn out to be one of the largest Native American cities ever established north of Mexico. If confirmed by further research with the largest currently known as Cahokia, a site in what's now Illinois where as many as 20,000 people lived about a thousand years ago. Ancestral Wichita communities in Kansas and northern Oklahoma that date between around 1425 and 1650 existed in a time frame during which South American Incan civilizations rose and fell, according to common belief. In the 1800s, European settlers drove ancestral Wichita people from their native lands, leading to the destruction of their villages and communal traditions and values that were practiced for millennia. The newly discovered earthwork consists of a two meter wide ditch that forms a semi-circle 
about 50 meters across, which apparently is similar to other circular earthworks known as council circles. Five such circles have been found among 22 ancestral Wichita sites excavated along the Walnut River. Donald Blakesley of Wichita State University says that we apparently have located the sixth council circle and the only one that has not been disturbed. Farming and construction projects have damaged or covered many ancestral Wichita sites, but this one seems preserved remarkably. Drone surveys can truly transform our ability to locate sites and map important features where huge areas have been plowed and surface traces of houses and ditches are often close to invisible, according to archaeologist Douglas Bam from the University of Colorado Boulder, who did not participate in the new study. It's unclear how ancestral Wichita people used council circles. Researchers have suggested that these structures were places for ritual ceremonies, houses of social elites, or protection from attackers. Based on previous discoveries of items made of seashells and other exotic materials at council circles, these structures must have hosted rituals of some kind, and drone imagery alone can't establish whether rituals occurred at the buried earthwork or if. For now, the drone discovery is a fascinating mystery. The city of Etsanoa likely existed as a single spread out community. From 2015 to 2019, the excavation took place at the House Family Cattle Ranch in southeastern Kansas that uncovered ancestral Wichita objects such as stone tools and cooking utensils, as well as 17th century Spanish items, including a horseshoe nail and even bullets. These finds supported Spanish documents and maps of Etsanoa that resulted from the 1601 expedition to the Wichita Territory and led the Kansas State Legislature in 2017 to designate the site and its surrounding area as the Lost City of Etsanoa. Aerial sweeps were conducted over grazing land at the cattle ranch, where ancient structures had likely suffered minimal damage. Drone-mounted equipment measured heat and radiation differences in the ground to detect buried structures. The underground earthwork at the house ranch lay near the highest point of the property, overlooking the river valley with other circular earthworks of the ancestral Wichita and neighboring groups in the southern Great Plains were also built at elevated spots. Drone imagery also picked up signs of two pits, one dug at or near each end of the semicircular structure. Makers of the earthwork may have removed soil from the pits to construct mounds inside its borders, as has been observed at excavated council circles in the region. While erosion may have partly worn away what was originally a circular earthwork, according to the Science News Journal. Further plans to explore more underground features of the Kansas site with additional remote sensing techniques are underway before starting excavations in early 2021 so that digging can precisely target the earthwork and any surrounding remains which will also up the likelihood of uncovering material suitable for radiocarbon dating and revealing the true age of the structure which is a very exciting prospect indeed in our opinion but what do you guys think about this latest discovery of the lost history of the great settlement of the native americans comments below and as always Thank you for watching. Well, we're practically in the center of a Native American town that was called Etzanoa, that was visited by the Spanish in 1601 AD. And eyewitnesses from that expedition reported that the town was on both sides of the river, at least five miles long with roughly 20,000 inhabitants, far more than anyone expected for a town on the Great Plains. It absolutely changes our, our view of uh, the plains at that early time period. Uh, there were probably other large settlements to the north, also occupied by ancestral Wichita. A town up in northwestern Iowa is now estimated at 10,000. More large places up in North Dakota. So rather than the teepee dwelling folks of the Hollywood image, a far different view of settled people uh, 
processing bison in industrial quantities, trading with people at great distances, speaking a variety of languages. Why here? Excellent water. Uh, the springs all along the bluff here provide pure water. Uh, plenty of trees, uh, ready access to the bison herds further away. Well, research here is going to continue long after I'm gone. We're just getting started uh, sampling some spots in the town. Uh, there's plenty been excavated already, and we want to compare between places within the town to see what differences there might be and to try to track the chronology of the place. We know it was occupied for roughly 300 years, but we don't know how big it was when it started. We only know how big it was in 1601.